find a couple of uh, a couple of quick a couple of quick quotes. Jesus, a man. Jesus Christ, a man. Was Jesus Christ a man? Now a lot of Christians will say, Jesus is God. Jesus Christ is God. He's not a man. And, that, and we've actually heard a lot of them with the Bible all in their hand, running, you know, clutching that Bible and stuff like that. But obviously not not clutching the truth of the Bible, but clutching the Bible, you know, as a symbol. But obviously not the word of the Bible. So many Christians out there will allege that well, Jesus Christ was not a man, he was God. They'll say it's clear Jesus was God. And when we as Rastafari, as Rastafari speak of his imperial majesty, the first thing that many would say is that, well, um, his imperial majesty was just a man, mortal, and then they play the particular interview and then they interpolate and add on a lot of other ideas from their imagination that his majesty said that he wasn't divine and they imagined that his majesty said that he wasn't Christ which basically means anointed, and that's a Hebraic and a um, Ethiopic, a Ethiopian Hebrew custom, seeing Ethiopia's uh, Hebraic history in relation with uh, the Beit Israel, which some want to argue and debate about and say is this and that, but it's obvious that Ethiopians and faithful, blameless Ethiopians have nearly have nearly 3,000 years of history to prove it and all they have is basically their denials those those uh, Ethiopian Hebrew deniers so they will tell us or try to tell us, try to deceive us that His Imperial Majesty is just a man and mortal and Jesus according to them Jesus is God but that's a that's a anti Christian idea. To say that Jesus Christ is just God and try to deny that Jesus Christ is a man, it is opposite of what the Bible clearly, clearly and repeatedly says of Jesus Christ. In fact, throughout the scriptures, especially the New Testament, we find many areas where Jesus Christ actually states, or the record, speaking of the Bible, actually states the man, Jesus Christ. The man, Jesus Christ. Like one of the interesting areas, and it's just going into some of the basic areas that we can find quickly here just to reference what we're saying. John 3 and 2, it says, the same came to Jesus by night, speaking of Nicodemus, and said to him, Rebbe, or Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Right? Now, some will say, well, this is tongue-in-cheek, because actually Nicodemus is talking to God, not to a man, but let's, let's go further. Now, 9-11... Let's go to John 9.11. It's very interesting that it's in John 9.11 that we have a little clearer example. It says, He answered and said, A man that is called Jesus made clay. He didn't say God, who was called Jesus, but man. They'll say, well, this is because he wasn't known as God because he was disguised as man. Okay. Mortal? Was Jesus mortal? We have to ask that question. Now, if he's God, how can God die? And if he is mortal, then how can he be God? See, this is some of the theological, uh, some of the theological debates that was going on amongst them. But right here it says, it says, a man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed, christened, to say anointed, christened mine eyes and said to me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and I received sight. But... There's a couple other places that are interesting to note, but this is John 9, 11. So write that down for your notes. And on top of that, when you go to say a scripture like John 12 and 23, where Jesus answered them saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Well, where does this idea of Son of God come from? Is he the Son of
son of man or the son of God. Once again, another theological issue that Christians and people who are seeking Christ have a right to, to ask, question, and, and seek the truth out for themselves. But these organized, orthodox, so-called religionists, they persecuted people when they asked such questions, just like they're persecuting Rastafari for presenting a more faithful and a true a true presentation of, of the facts. Oh, um, what, what, what's this other verse right here? Um, behold the man. Uh, behold the man. What should this man do? Oh, okay, here's his Acts. This is what we want to get to Acts. Acts. In Acts of the Apostle, chapter 2, verse 22. I think this is where, what was Peter? Where Peter is finally, he got his courage up and he was converted finally. And now he becomes the head of the, the disciples, or some would say even the apostles, but that is disputed because some would say it was actually Paul and others would say James. But here in Acts 2 and 22, ye men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth. Notice, this is key, this is in the time. He didn't say Jesus Christ, but in Acts 2 and 22, we're going to the roots of Christianity. It says Jesus of Nazareth. What does it say? A man. A man, not God approved of God, but it says a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs. So he wasn't trying to say Jesus was not a man and was not mortal. Just like Rastafari, his majesty and pearl majesty, he's a man and he's mortal. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him. But listen to a lot of these anti-Christian, Christian so-called, they will say that Jesus did these miracles himself. They, they don't testify as, the, as, the, as those who knew Jesus Christ and represented him so that even they could come along and call themselves Christian. Here it says, which God did by him in the midst of you as ye yourselves also, also, no. Then we go to Acts 4 and 10. It says, Be it known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ, now Jesus Christ, Jesus, the anointed one of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, so he could only be raised from the dead if he was a man and mortal. Even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. So that's to the point, 4 and 10 of Acts is to the point of the mortality of Jesus Christ. So this is no different. So he tried to put Jesus Christ in a different category than his imperial majesty. You know, and this is what's really, this is what's really, uh, really interesting. Sad, but interesting. Let's go to Romans. How about Romans? Let's sit here in the mouth of with the two or three witnesses. So we heard from, from Peter and some of the other um, uh, disciples and apostles. But now let's just hear a testimony from uh, Paul. Paul says in Romans 5 and 15, But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be, what, dead, much more the grace of God, and the gift by grace, which is by one man, by one man, Jesus Christ. One man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded to many. So that's very interesting. Make a note of that as well, that Jesus Christ was both a man and mortal. Romans 5.15, it bears witness to that. Um, we, there's other verses we can point to 1 Corinthians 3.11 For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So is it saying he is the foundation? Yes, but can no man lay? Who laid down his life? It was Jesus Christ, the man. So the man, humanity, being a man is actually the foundation. If you, if you can receive that, that, theological, that quick theological explanation right there but if not just receive the word for now um well, let's uh go to let's go to uh well, there's one other verse that we wanted to point out um 
Oh, here, here we go. Here we go. First Timothy. And we're going to conclude around here. Though there's probably other references we can, we can uh, go into in the scripture to show that Jesus Christ mortal and man, Rastafari or Ketamawi, Haile Selassie, mortal and man, and both admitted it, and the scriptures admit it, and the reality admit it, because the foundation, if we accept the understanding of 1 Corinthians 3.11, that that foundation is Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ is that man who laid down his life, you understand? So he is both the foundation. No, no, no other man can lay a better foundation or other foundation than the foundation which is laid, and that is Jesus Christ. Therefore, an overstanding of that is that humanity, the humanity of Christ,